Hey guys, we finished up the little bit of interior fabric work that we wanted to do. So I wanted to stop and show you guys kind of what that looks like and how we did it before we move on. So stick around and we'll show you that process. All right, so I actually hadn't planned to put any fabric on the interior, but the fact that it kind of adds a layer of protection to the exterior fabric, especially in, in the cargo area, was appealing to me. Also, um, we were considering using Oratex for the exterior fabric, but I was a little nervous about my ability to learn how to install it well. So I thought, you know, testing it out on something that didn't necessarily have to be airworthy um, was a good idea. Painting and repairing traditional fabric on the interior kind of seemed like it'd be a little bit of a hassle. So we decided to give Oratech a go for the little bit that we're doing here on the interior, mostly in areas that um, would protect the exterior fabric from stuff in the cargo area. Before we started, we measured where the flap cables will penetrate the fabric on both the inside and the outside and wrote them down. Trying to decide how to put the fabric on the left side wasn't exactly apparent to me. So I used strips of tape to help visualize different layouts and decide how to route it. Once I had a plan, I cut off an oversized piece of Oratex, held it in place with some spring clamps and marked where the cuts needed to be made. I started with cuts that kept the fabric furthest from its final location. Then I would reposition the fabric and work on the remaining locations. I cut slits for the stringer and window frame standoffs, cut around the float fittings in place, the aft wing attachment point, and one of the tubing clusters. Once the fabric was laying how I wanted it, I used a pencil to mark the fabric everywhere glue would be applied. Next, I scuffed up all of the painted tubing with some sandpaper to help the glue bond. After everything was scuffed up a bit, I wiped all of the surfaces down with denatured alcohol and a rag. With all the surfaces prepped, it was time to start applying the glue. First, we stirred the glue up well. Then we poured what we planned to use through a paint strainer to make sure there wasn't anything that would create a bump or show through the fabric once finished. We used foam brushes to apply the glue and let them soak in distilled water ahead of time to help keep the glue from drying out on the brush. After shaking out excess water in the brush, we started applying a thin coat of the Oratex glue to all parts of the structure the fabric would touch. Then we applied the glue to the fabric where we previously marked. The parts that would wrap around the tubing, I applied glue a little wider than necessary as it would get cut off anyways. All surfaces get two coats of glue and the first coat needs to dry completely before applying the second. The glue turns clear once it is dry. It took about 45 minutes in our shop. Once both coats of glue on both surfaces had dried, I started tacking the fabric in place. I did this by positioning the fabric back into place so the glued areas lined up and used clamps and magnets where necessary. Then, mostly using the iron, we tacked the fabric in place. When the opposite side was reasonably well secured, we tried to pull the fabric fairly tight before tacking it. Pressing the iron onto the piece for a couple of seconds was all it took to melt the glue a little bit and create a fairly strong bond. In spots that were hard to reach for the iron, I used the heat gun. I went back and forth on where and how to terminate the fabric at the front on the left hand side, but I ended up tucking it inside the door former.
A lot of the small little details like the tabs, I waited to cut around until the fabric was mostly in place. Probably my biggest error so far was cheaping out and buying the half width roll of Ortex to save on shipping. This meant I had to do the left side in two pieces and have a short seam behind the window. It doesn't really matter since it's just interior fabric, but making this seam look nice was outside my current abilities. Hindsight, I probably should have joined the two pieces before tacking either to the structure, but instead I waited until the top and bottom pieces were completely tacked in place and then glued them. I also taped over the slit made to accommodate one of the stringer standoffs. I masked off the area to glue a quarter inch narrower than the strip that would cover it. Then I heated it all up to activate the glue and pressed it all together. I wasn't really thrilled with how the seam behind the window looked, so I thought I would add a patch over it. Honestly, I probably made it worse, but Dakota will be the only one looking out that window anyways, and I doubt he complains about it. Once all the fabric was tacked in place on the left side, I permanently riveted the window frames on for the second time. The right side was much simpler. The float fitting and that tubing cluster were the only notable obstacles to cut around. On both sides, I wrapped the fabric around the outside of the lower longeron because the floorboards need to rest on the top of the longeron for support. I don't plan to cover the inside of the cargo doors because they'll be skinned in aluminum so there won't be any exterior fabric to shield. The top piece of fabric on the right side was all on the inside with very little to cut around so it went up very easily. Once everything was tacked in place and we were confident any remaining wrinkles would shrink out, we set the glue permanently. I found this part to be much easier with three hands. One hand pulling the fabric to keep it tight, one hand running the heat gun, and the third hand smoothing down the fabric right behind the heat gun with a felt pad. This is the fun part. Once the glue cured completely, we used the heat gun to shrink the fabric and pull all the wrinkles out. Generally, we tried to start in the open areas absent of wrinkles and start shrinking in those regions to draw out the wrinkles as much as possible, and then start working towards the wrinkles and hitting them last. We also tried to stay away from anywhere with glue to keep from remelting it. Once the glue is cured completely, it melts at a much higher temperature, but it would still be easy to melt if you focused on it when shrinking the fabric. If we needed to shrink close to a glued spot, I tried to shield it while Amanda heated the nearby area. After everything had cooled, the last step was to iron the open areas. We used the Oratex release paper. It has a dull side and a shiny side, just like wax paper. The shiny side goes down with the paper between the iron and the fabric. Then we slowly ironed all of the open areas. I read that this removes any heat gun tracks left by the shrinking. 
I didn't see any heat gun tracks, but we did this step anyways. I was really thinking that after using Oratex on the interior, it would be a lot easier to decide if I wanted to use it or something else on the exterior, but that didn't really happen. I'm still not totally convinced that I can do a very good job with the exterior fabric using Oratex, but we're gonna go with your guys' number one pick anyways. Even if it does make us look especially silly now for paying the exorbitant shipping price twice, but yeah, we'll get over it. Um, there's a few little details I'm kind of worried about. I've been practicing and some of the tight radiuses are, are hard to get the fabric to, to lay the way I'd like it to. I'm worried about a few spots on the fuselage and getting the fabric to lay nice. And there's still some installation details that I'm trying to, to figure out and figure out how to do. But I'm optimistic that we can learn. I like the idea of not having to paint nearly as much. And if the stuff is really as durable and long lasting and easy to repair as, as advertised, then I think it'll pay off in the long run and we'll be happy. But we'll check in after we've actually installed some airworthy fabric and show you guys how that went. So we'll see you guys in the next one.